Hi everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. This video is designed to tackle a problem that I get a lot of questions about. And that's about the automatic oilers on these XL automatics, the Super 2, the XL2. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> that was great timing. There are two different oil systems that were used in here on this model. The XL2 and the Super 2 were all the diaphragm pump setup. This model could be a diaphragm pump or it could be direct crankcase pressure. Either way, they work basically the same in the sense that the tank has to get pressurized. Now the method of pressurizing is what's different. If you've got a crankcase actuated diaphragm, you're going to have it over on this side and it's going to plunge in and out and that's going to build pressure in the oil tank which will force oil over to a junction block on the crankcase here and then to the bar pad. If you have the crankcase pressure oiler, it's just going to have a crankcase pressure hose coming off up into the tank It'll pressurize the tank, same, same thing, force oil out. No matter which system you have, you gotta have a few things like a duckbill valve and the connector tube in the tank here, in the oil tank at your top hose. You gotta have a cap that'll seal. If your cap's all warped and blown out, no gasket, all, any pressure it builds is just going to leak out. It's not going to force any oil out. You'll be running a dry chain. So, we're going to pretty much go into this blind. I already know that something's wrong with this saw. Because I popped the cap here, and I looked down in the top, and there's no hose sticking out there. So I already know there's something not right. So we're going to find out what it is. To do that, you got to take the saw apart. Just no way around it. You got four starter screws, that's where you start. Now this, I have a feeling the tank was filled at some point when, when that hose was already missing or broken. That would explain some of the oil in here. Alright, next step, get your spark plug out of the way, which means out of the engine. It should be a 5.8 socket. If you have to use a three-quarter, somebody has put the wrong plug in here and you need to rectify that when you put it back together. These have a tapered seat for the spark plug. You do not want a gasketed plug. This has the Champion DJ7J in it. It's seen better days. Can probably be cleaned up and used, but that's not the point of this video. Alright, the rest of getting the engine out of the case. Screw, screw, and two screws down there. They if they're original, they're going to be a flat head on the older ones. And then after about, mm, I think somewhere around 88, they might be a flat head Torx combo. The Torx is nice, but if you're not careful, it will rip out. And let me tell you from experience, drilling these things out is not the most fun on the planet. I get a lot of email from folks saying, hey, I need a, need a diaphragm, my pump's not working. And I would guess only one out of, say, 25 of those, actually, you'd need a diaphragm. Most of the time, it's going to be what we're looking at here. All right, so to get this engine case or engine out of the case, you also need to take your kill switch lead off. And this is a plastic case. So there's actually two. There's the grounding tab, 
lead and then the kill switch lead so those both need to come loose so tuck your spark plug wire kind of in here where the plug would normally go right next to the muffler here and then slide it out and as a oh, bar plate can't be on there either forgot that it was there normally you would have pulled your bar and chain and this wouldn't be an issue but I wasn't paying attention okay again go ahead and start sliding it out now see get this all right see this throttle rod what you want to do is work the engine out and you see how that pulled out from up here where it indexes in you're going to put it together exact opposite of that slide it in line this up and then roll it back into the case that saves you the hassle of taking the throttle handle cover off and potentially breaking it I do recommend getting this off and out of the way. Now this saw is going to need a lot more work. But I want to point a couple things out right here and now. Because this is primarily an oiling system that we're looking at. Alright, that's probably as good as I'm going to get. Alright. This is a crankcase pressure setup. You see there's nothing, no hose coming over here. And that recess where there would be a diaphragm is not machined for one. There's no cover, there's no screws, there's no plunger, nothing. If you had that setup, all that crap would be there. And you'd have a hose port right here. That's where this pressure line would be connecting to. And your oil discharge line, the one that has the filter on it, would be coming over to basically this location and there'd be another one below it that goes down to the bar pad. Since this is crankcase pressure, this port is just going down to the cylinder and on the downstroke it creates a pulse that comes in. In theory, the duckbill valve allows the pulse in, closes off, pressurizes this tank, oil comes out this lower hose and over to the bar pad. Now we see the hose is still here, but like I said, there's nothing visible in the tank. Whoopsie, look at that, it's broken off. Pretty common. Now, if you go to the IPLs, you notice that there's supposed to be a what they call a connector. It's a, basically a centered tube. That means it's just a little tube that's hollow on the inside. It's porous. That's what you put in the end of the hose to put that duckbill on. Well, good luck finding one of those at a reasonable price anymore. The folks that have them on eBay, I've seen somebody selling a duckbill and connector combo for 25 bucks. Now, you know I've got duckbills for... Was it two? I think they're at 249 right now. I don't have any of those connectors to sell. So what's a guy to do? Find your old one. Most of the time, what I'm about to show you will work. Now you got to get your carburetor out of the way in order to get the tank off without really distorting it. Now again, I've got a ton of other work to do on this saw. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that off. Since that is an opening right into the engine, we're going to plug that up so that trash can't get down there. Okay. 
disconnect your discharge hose from over here at the bar pad and in that case you see how that shattered just blew apart these hoses were trash so even if it had tried to oil it probably would have just made a mess now that should have been the pressure line right there you can hear the filter down in there but let's use just a little bit of deductive reasoning this goes through the tank and that connector and duct bill are supposed to be on the inside your caps on if it breaks off where's it gonna go nine I'd say more than nine out of ten times probably 95 percent of the time it's gonna be in the bottom of the tank so how do you get it out well you can try the one way if you don't have if you've got oil in there you need to drain out drain it slowly into a funnel into a container and I would almost drain it through a wire screen or something like that so that you can catch it if it comes out now this tank appears to be pretty dry so I'm going to try just tapping it now when those rot off like that usually one the hose and or the duckbill have gotten gooey the rubber has rotted. Now, I don't know if there's a little residual oil in here, but we're going to put down a paper towel just in case. Ah, see, there it is. And nothing has come out that I wanted to see. So, something in there that will act as a solvent and it's possible it's not in there it's possible that somebody removed it they were trying to repair the the hose or something like that and broke it off and took it out and say this doesn't always work well we're just going to take a little bit of our mixed fuel and it doesn't take much but with that in there being careful not to shake it on your face. All right. Now we're going to see if we get a little magic. I'm going to pour some of this fuel off okay, that's the vast majority of it let's see if we get lucky like we're not going to. If it had been in there, it would have come out by now, and one end would have been shiny and the other would have been covered with a black rubber goo. I wish in a way that that's what had happened, because that again is most of the time what is going to happen in one of these instances, but it didn't, so... Now we'll have to use an alternative, some sort of a tube. There's the oh, 07508 that was used on the late model Super 2s. It's a plastic fitting. That's what I'll end up using in here when this saw goes back together. But that in a nutshell is what you're going to need to do to A, identify what kind of oiler you've got if you've got one of these XLs and then to check. You want to exhaust all alternatives before saying that it's not down there because if you get that that little bronze tube out of there you can clean it up, slip a new duct bill on, slip some new hoses on here and away you go for a whole heck of a lot less money. So that's the procedure folks. Hopefully this helps.